Castro is such a uh, such a bad dude. I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Don't miss out on our comic book creator interviews, including our monthly Chichester chats with comic book legend D.G. Chichester, superhero movie brackets in our search for the worst comic book movie of all time, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month, full video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes or go to patreon.com slash capesandlunatics. Hope to see you there. This is Luca Perich, host of a Totally Turtle Sports and Gaming YouTube channel, and you're listening to the Case and Lunatics Podcast Network. In brightest day, in blackest night, no evil shall escape my sight. But those who worship evil's might, beware my power. Green Lantern's light. Hello and welcome back to Sector 2814, the Green Lantern Podcast. I am Phil. Joining me, as always, Master of the Court is... I am Will. Hey, everyone. And we are back to discuss Green Lantern Legacy, the last will and testament of Hal Jordan. <laughs> so long, I'm always like, did I get that whole thing? Yes, but yes, I believe it's Green Lantern Legacy. That's the whole title, yeah. <laughs> yes, the last will and testament of Hal Jordan. That's right, kids. So important. That's the only thing we're covering tonight. The well, the only issue we're covering tonight. Mm-hmm. But well, it's well, like a hundred pages. So. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so probably about the usual amount of content we usually cover, but <laughs> usually spread it across like three issues. All right. So, I mean, you if you're listening to this on the podcast, there was no interruption. But yes, it's been a it's been a little bit since we've talked, William. Uh, <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> oh, are you still keeping up on your Qu- Quantum Leap rewatch, the original? Uh, uh, we haven't in the last few days. I was traveling, so we hadn't yeah, had yeah. a chance to get back to it. So, um, but yeah, I just started. Still... I just started season five, the last season. Okay, because the, the the Evil Leapers were only in like one episode, right? Um, I think it might be, it might be a trilogy. I'm not sure, but it's all in season five. Yeah, it's like okay. Yeah, it's only like, yeah, yeah, maybe two or three episodes. I, I'm not there yet. I all right. Mean, Evil leapers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I just started season five, so I just watched the two part Lee Harvey Oswald. Oh. Yeah, apparently um he knew Lee Harvey Oswald. They were in the army together or something. Who? Um oh, the, uh, the creator of Quantum oh, Leap. Bellis- oh, Belisario. Uh, yeah, Belisario, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. There's a YouTube video where he talks about it a little bit. I, was, I ran across it as I was looking for Quantum Leap stuff. And Well, yeah, and if you knew him, yeah, definitely do an episode like that. <laughs> they uh, changed that theme song kind of in season five, and I don't like it. Oh, I don't remember that. I'll have, When we get to it, I'll, I'll have to. Yeah, yeah, t- yeah. Tell me what you think, because I don't like it. <laughs> Oh. Uh, so what's going on, sir? Um, not a lot. Like I like like you knew offline. I mean, uh, if you heard our interview with Mr. Jeff Johnson, I did get a uh, piece yes. of artwork from Mr. <laughs> Jeff Johnson. Oh my god! <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, uh, yeah, that was that was awesome. Nice Wonder Man. <laughs> I knew his comments every day. I was I, like, I was like a child running to the mailbox, like, oh, did Santa bring me something good? <laughs> Not yet, not yet. <laughs> Every day I just walked away from the mailbox dejected. Oh. Then uh, oh. It, was, it was just yesterday. Then I was like, I got home. I didn't see it. Then my wife got the mail. I was like, oh, you got it. I'm like, yeah, I saw it sitting on my desk. I'm like, oh, there it is. <laughs> well, let's see. Were you off last week or did you, you went back last week, right? Back to work? Um, Wait, was last week Thanksgiving? I had the day before Thanksgiving off through the Monday after. So, yeah, like the two. Oh, yeah. So last week after. you were at work. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Yep. Gotcha. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, yeah, back to work. Oh. Yep, yep. <laughs> it's not too bad. The rest of the month I only have like, there's only one week where I work a full week. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Nice. And then the second half of the month I'm off. Woo-hoo. So, I don't think we've heard. We know who the writer is. Oh, on those uh, Green Lantern books, yeah, the Green Lantern books, but still I have no to... artists are attached. Yet. No, and again, well, the first one isn't coming until April, so yeah, I wonder yeah. if they're waiting for the solicits or I don't know. And I, I think that, I mean, there's still time. Could they still be hunting artists or? I mean, how much lead not. time do they need that when they create a comic like that? How much lead time do they need? I mean, you know, you would hope that 
uh, if it's the the only job that the artist is doing, that they could maybe do a page a day, you mm-hmm. know. So in a month, they're doing about twenty pages, so it yeah. should be about a month, you know, lead time to, to do it. But uh, maybe that's not necessarily the case anymore because you know, there's the artists put a lot more work into it. You know, these days there's a lot yeah. more detail. There's a lot more, uh, you know, just intricate pages. So maybe by like you know, January, February at the latest, maybe we'll hear something. Hopefully, or I think they, unless they know they're and they're just keeping it close to their vest, you know, that's possible too. I think Marco Santucci is doing the art for Emerald Knight. Is that right? Does that sound right? Um, I can look that up, but uh. But yes, must be coming in December because I haven't seen it. <laughs> so, well, it is December. I it, so. Yeah, I think it's set for December twenty seventh now. Yeah, from... yeah. I think the last time was that the last time or time before we talked. Yeah, they had moved it to like mm-hmm. yeah, December. Damn it. Uh, wait, wait. Uh, Green. Uh, yeah, I think it was seeing Tucci, but I'm looking it up here. Listen to us, Google kids. Uh, be amazed. You will believe. Be amazed at a <laughs> uh, I think I saw a tweet from Marco saying that it would be out the 27th, but I'm not sure. Man, there's a lot of stuff in the Green Lantern Emerald Knight. Uh, <laughs> or is it John Stewart Emerald Knight? <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm excited. I mean, I can't wait till we get those books next year. Mm-hmm. It's been a while. A monthly Green Lantern book. It has. It'll have been a year. Mm-hmm. Which is just nuts. I mean, that is that's nuts. Yeah, and I, I think I saw. Um, I don't know if they announced the team, but I think Green Arrow's getting a book again. Uh, I think Aquaman might be getting some. Oh, but uh, I don't know if the Justice League's getting a book. It looks like maybe they said they're really like pushing for the Titans to be like the new number one team. And yeah, I think they're bringing the. I mean, they put out the 30th anniversary issue, but I think they're bringing back some Wild Storm stuff. So, oh, yeah. Well, they may just be wanting. wanting oh, to give... I I did read it. There was a story there where Director Bones is like trying to make what is it Stormwatch or something like the new. I guess it takes place while the Justice League's dead. He's like, "Oh yeah, we need we need like a new team," and uh, basically gives them the Watchtower. <laughs> uh, here we go. Yeah, Marco Santucci. Yes. Cool. And it will be coming out. Let's see, in twenty four days. Hopefully. <laughs> Fingers crossed. That'll be the first first Green Lantern book since april and the last one of the year <laughs> well we did get that we did get that uh worlds without a dark crisis worlds without a justice league great later number one <laughs> i think that was a justice league book <laughs> I know. what's the closest thing we got to a green lantern like yeah absolutely unfortunately all right uh yeah, i don't think there's any other green lantern news uh oh um not a lot of him in the. Oh, I think we did. I talk Justice Society of America number one already. Because was that was that last week or the week before? Yeah, that was out. I think uh, so. Yeah, with the Red Lantern. Yeah, Golden Age Red Lantern. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not a lot of. I mean, not a lot of um, Alan Scott yet. But yeah, so if you're if you like your Alan Scott, yeah, Justice Society. It almost seems like I don't know if they're going to do a thing where like a Helena Wayne from the future comes back to be part of the Justice Society. It looks like maybe they're setting something like that up. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. I mean, this was so much easier when there was just Earth 2. Okay? Mm. There's Superman over there. There's a Batman over there. There's a Wonder Woman over there. There's... They had. They got older. They had kids. You know? Yeah. There you go. And then we've got the present day and them. And But is, but is it a thing where it's just like... If you do that, though, it's like, oh, yeah, you know, you got old man Bruce Wayne having kids and stuff and, you know, and like mm-hmm. old Superman. It's like, but there are they? is it just like, oh, well, we don't want to make like Alan Scott and Jay Garrick like 100 years old. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I mean, because, again, yeah, well, I mean, I mean, after crisis, the whole thing was like, well, OK, now they're World War Two heroes. Well, now, but they're still active in the 90s. It's like, so how do we explain <laughs> how it's... these old men are still, you know, in some now it's cases of someone literally running around? 
yeah, 80 years later now, and <laughs> old men. Yeah, I know. They're like, oh, we're 100. Yeah, they're 100 years old. <laughs> I mean, look at the I 90s. Know. I mean, we de aged Alan Scott for a while. Yeah, that's true. And then we aged him back up. I think oh, yeah, he was during, uh, in the Green Lantern a, title. Yeah. <laughs> there was a Justice Society book coming. Let's let's make him old again. That's right. <laughs> oh, um, have you been watching Stargirl? Um, I I started, you know, trying to catch up on what I had missed, but uh, I haven't gotten back to it in a yeah. week or two. So well, I'm still this, on season two. Yeah. Well, this coming Wednesday is not only the season, but also the series finale of Stargirl. Oh. Has it? How has this season been? Has it been pretty good? Um, yeah, it's been decent. Yeah, I mean, uh, Icicles back. Uh, we got Ultra Humanite. Mm-hmm. Uh, dealing, you know, it's like, oh, is he in the white gorilla body? And then we flash back to him in the actress's body, and you know, it's just. <laughs> oh yeah, they're definitely playing up that you know, Ultra Humanite can swap body, you know, mm-hmm. his brain in different bodies. So, no, it's been it's been entertaining. Mm. Any Green Lantern stuff this season, or was that just last um, season? Um, I mean, well, they did have a two part like in the middle of the season. Well, Jade, and then they uh, introduced Obsidian. Like there was like oh. a two parter in the middle of the season, so there's a little bit of that. So I don't know if they're going to make an appearance, in, you know, this coming week since it's the last episode. But I, again, I, it seemed like they just announced that not too long ago. So I don't know how much lead time they had gave them to be like, oh, hey, this is your final episode. Wrap everything up. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. All right. So should we get to should we get to this uh this will? Hey Will, should we get to this will? <laughs> Let's uh yeah, because I have I have thoughts. Oh, I'm sure you do. <laughs> and I'm sure you do too, because I, I was a little confused. I at hope, times. You're as, hope you're not as angry as Tom, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they were, right. they were what really put him through the ringer in this, too. Uh huh. Yeah, no kidding. I right know. All the, right. Uh, hmm. And there are some retcons in here, I think, because I want to talk to you about some of those. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah. All right. I, <laughs> I, I have the synopsis, which is quite lengthy. So just stop me when you want to talk. Oh, my God. I'm just <laughs> rolling. All right. So, yeah, just stop me when hey, I. What? To... I'll, I'll let you read it and then we'll dive into it. How about that? Because otherwise, we may never let you finish. You know? all, right, all right, kids, get back. Get back, because this is a this is a lengthy one. Hey, all right, pull up a chair. Pull up a chair and get a warm yeah. drink. Here we go. All right. So yes, this will be a different kind of episode. I'm going to read a long, lengthy synopsis, and then Will is just going to spend the other half of the episode bitching about it. Yes. <laughs> Oh wait, that's every show. That's every week. It's a Tuesday, right? <laughs> well, well, especially in this, it's gonna be. I think it's kind of gonna kind of the varying varying degrees be that way until we hit rebirth, kids. Uh, <laughs> Get off my lawn! <laughs> <laughs> All right, the Green Lantern Legacy: The Last Will and Testament of Hal Jordan, January night, uh, nineteen January two thousand and two. Writer Joe Kelly. Uh, penciler Brent Anderson, inkers Bill Sinkevich, colorist Rob Rowe and Alex Blyart, and letterer Sean Cannot, editors Bob Shrek and Nachi Castro. Right. Here we go, kids. This issue begins with someone saying the Green Lantern Oath with an image of a dead Green Lantern power battery. In the backdrop of the oath, we see flashes of how Jordan's life from the time he got the Green Lantern ring from a dying alien named Abin Sir to one of his fights against his arch enemy Sinestro and ending with the destruction of Coast City and Hal's transformation into Parallax. Well, there's nothing more to see here, kids. <laughs> uh, we then jump to a funeral, Hal's funeral, where Green Lantern's best friend and sidekick Tom Kalamaku goes up to the stage and gives a very moving speech about Hal telling everyone that such nice funerals should not be given to murderous cowards like Hal after what he did after Coast City's destruction. Uh, yes. It's going to be that kind of day, kids. Yeah. Once again, we're here to uh, bash Will, Will, Will Allred right in the soul. That's right. I'm going to go cry. <laughs> the, scene, the scene then jumps to a bar. Now it becomes a joke where a bunch of guys are talking about the death of their Green Lantern. Tom then goes up on it on top of a table, clearly drunk, calling Green Lantern in the core out. 
calling them by calling them uh, honoring a murderer. He is then knocked out in one punch. Ah, they came the old Kai Gardner, see? <laughs> by someone who stood up for Green Lantern. He is then thrown into a cab where the driver recognizes him as a celebrity because of his past friendship with Green Lantern. Tom clearly doesn't want to talk about it and tells the driver to just take him home. But the driver is not who he seems to be. It's Hal as the Spectre. It's a wonderful life. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Tom then remembers a time when Green Lantern got caught in a web made by a yellow spider. <laughs> because the spider is yellow, his ring cannot affect it or help him out. And since he's caught in the web, his ring has lost its charge. Tom then throws a rock at the spider to get his attention. Telling Tom to get away, Hal finds out why he came. Because Carol was celebrating her birthday alone, he knew something was wrong with Hal. And he brought a present. His power battery! <laughs> but the spider has caught Tom and attacks him. However, the distraction was long enough for Hal to recharge his ring and bury the spider under a pile of rocks, defeating the creature. As they take the spider away, Hal thanks Tom for saving his life and for once calls Tom his hero. Unfortunately, it was just a dream. <laughs> was it just it, a dream? It was just a dream? Yep. I don't know. Oh, okay. I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> I don't know if it ever happened. I don't know. <laughs> Tom wakes up hungover to the sound of his wife, who recently left Tom with the kids. She tells him that the kids were thinking about him recently and she was worried about him. Before she can tell him that she loves him, Tom rips the phone line out and throws it away and falls onto the couch. The next day at work, Tom is fired from his job because he's too hungover to perform his job properly. Back at his house, Tom tries to get drunk again among a pile of papers and starts to burn one of the pages when he hears a knock on his door. It's a strange man he's never met before. The man comes inside and tells him that he is the executor of Hal's last will and testament. There's your title. And that <laughs> Tom is one of his inheritors. Tom immediately slams the door in the man's face, but it doesn't stop him. He comes inside anyway. He tells Tom that Hal left something for him in his will, but Tom doesn't want it. But like it or not, the executor gives it to him. It's Hal's son, Marty Jordan, and a piece of paper. <laughs> <sighs> After the executor leaves, the two are sitting at a table. While Marty is eating cereal, Tom is fixated on the paper that was given to him. It was written by Hal, and it only says, Tom, fix it. Tom and Marty then go to Carol's house. Tom tells her everything about the kid, thinking that she knows him. But the kid is seven years old, and seven years ago, she and Hal were just getting back together. I bet you were. Marty then comes in and asks Carol if she's mad at him. She tells him she's not, and he introduces himself to her, telling her that his father used to say nice things about her a lot. Oh, I bet he did. As that's happening, Tom is sitting outside on the front porch drinking. Marty comes out and tells him that someone is coming. Suddenly, a bright green flash shines above both of them and creates a big explosion. Carol comes out to see what's going on, and the three of them see the source of the explosion, a dark, giant creature with a scythe and the symbol of the Green Lantern Corps, a Dark Lantern! <laughs> Who could it be? Stay tuned, kids. <laughs> this guy's this guy going to show up again uh, in, in, uh, in the coming months. As the three watch in horror, Tom and Carol try to back away from the creature, but they notice Marty standing right in front of it. The creature attacks Marty, but Tom pulls him into the house just in time, but it is not enough as the Dark Lantern rips the house open looking for them. As they are cowering, Marty gives Tom something that he's had in his possession. A Green Lantern ring! <laughs> As that happens, the scene then jumps back to when Hal faced off against Mongol after Coast City was destroyed by him. While under the orders of Hank Henshaw, the cyborg Superman, during the reign of the Superman storyline. You know, you know, Dark Reed Richards. All right. Uh, because... <laughs> <sighs> Because, Ouch. because, oh. <laughs> and that pesky, that pesky yellow, because Mongol's skin was yellow, Hal's ring couldn't <laughs> affect him, which allowed Mongol to thrash him around, causing Hal's arm to break. Hal then constructs a constructs armor around himself and begins to pummel Mongol. Uh, the scene then jumps back to Carol's house as Tom is questioning Marty of what just happened with, with Carol looking on. 
Marty shows him the Green Lantern ring that he had in his pocket. Tom then takes him to the Justice League, where the members debate on what to do with the ring in the boy's hand, while Plastic Man plays with Marty, only to be pushed away by the boy. Eventually, they all decide that the boy must give them the ring, which causes Tom to storm off. The scene then jumps back again to a time after Hal became Parallax. Surrounded by images of the Green Lantern Court, Tom tries to convince Hal that whatever the problem is, he can help. But Hal tells him that it's not his business, it's core business. Just as Hal leaves, Tom asks himself if he could ever have been a Green Lantern. It then jumps back to the present where we see Tom talking with the current Green Lantern, Cal Rayner. Cal tells him that he remembers him from Hal's funeral. He tries to convince Tom that he... No. <laughs> no, Siri. Uh, but Tom blames... Uh, but Tom blames Hal for not using his ring to find his best friend after Coast City was destroyed. Marty then comes up behind Tom and tells him that he wants to go home alone, saying that the League is looking at him in a weird way, and then asks Tom what his father wrote in that letter, but Tom tries to avoid telling the boy what was on that note of paper. Eventually, Tom tells him that Hal only told him to fix it, but neither of them know what needs to be fixed. Just as the League are heading towards them, Tom and Marty use the ring to teleport away from the League headquarters. Ooh, glad someone charged it. Ah, just afterwards, the Dark Lantern attacks the League, calling out Jordan's name, but not finding him with the League. The Lantern heads out in the space and only says, it has a ring, and that he needs more. <sighs> we then see Tom and Marty at Tom's place. It looks like they are packing for a trip of some sort. In the process, Tom tells Marty about a book about, a book about Hal that he's writing. It's not finished, but Marty wants Tom to read it to him. Tom tells him that he will tell him some other time as they plan to go to a place where heroes meet. But Marty doesn't want to meet more heroes. Tom reassures him, saying that these heroes don't want to see him too, but they will help him them figure out what needs to be done, need to be fixed. The scene then jumps to Warriors, where we see former Green Lanterns Guy Gardner, John Stewart, who's still in a wheelchair, and Alan Scott, the original Green Lantern, whose power comes from the Starheart instead of the Green Lantern Central Battery. They all talk about the recent events, including the revelation that Hal had a son named Marty. Guy clearly feels that this is a matter for the League to handle, but John and Alan are more receptive. Alan thinks that the message Hal gave him was about Marty, to fix him up so that he will grow up to be a good man. Just as they finish the conversation, the Dark Lantern attacks warriors. Guy activates his Valdarian powers and attacks the Dark <laughs> Lantern, but the Lantern is too powerful for even Guy, who recognizes him who recognizes guy recognizes him and not and, and he's knocked away as the dark lantern turns its attention towards Tom and Marty. Yep, poozer. Alan gets them to huff to safety. Marty keeps on asking Tom what to do, but Tom doesn't know. But just as Marty touches Tom, he falls unconscious as he remembers the time when Hal told him about the power of the Green Lantern ring and how it's powered by the willpower of every sentient being in the universe. Mmm. Mm. Suddenly, Tom wakes up to the sound of Marty wondering why they ran away. Tom tells him that he blacked out, but Marty tells him that he ran away and left the other Green Lanterns to fend for themselves and starts telling Tom how his father wouldn't abandon his friends and how he would be ashamed of his best friend for what he has become. Tom lashes back at the kid, telling him that he doesn't know anything about his father and who he truly was and tells him that his father tells him what his father did after Coast City was destroyed. He went on a rampage towards Oa, fighting against his fellow core members and taking their rings for himself. When he landed on Oa, he was confronted by the Guardians of the Universe who released Sinestro to try and stop him. But Hal killed Sinestro by snapping his neck, then killing his old mentor, Kilowog, hmm. and then destroyed, then destroying the Guardians and the Central Power Battery and becoming Parallax. Just then he realizes where he is when he sees his kids right in front of him. He tells Marty to teleport them else, anywhere else as his kids call out to him. The scene then flashes back to a time when Green Lantern and his best friend Green Arrow are trying to stop a fire from destroying downtown Coast City, while some thugs are trying to destroy the city. Ollie wants Hal to go after the criminals, but Hal wants to save the innocent people first, and then go after the criminals and stop the fire. However, the argument heats up and Ollie fires an, an arrow at Hal, but Hal catches it with his bare hands, but the arrow releases a gas that knocks him out temporarily. Suddenly, Tom appears, telling them both that the fires are spreading. Hal then makes up his mind and uses his ring to take out the fires. The scene jumps back to the present as Tom and Morty are trying to keep on moving to stay one step ahead of the Dark Lantern. 
Knowing that the thing is alien, Tom suggests that they leave Earth and head to space to figure out the problem and fix it, which Morty agrees to. As they are flying through space, the Dark Lantern is following them. They then find the lost lanterns on a planet in front of a plaque dedicated to one of their fallen, Tomar II, who was one of the first to fall under Hal's rampage towards Oa. These lanterns include Boudica, whose right hand was cut off by Hal, and others who lost their powers after the battery was destroyed. Boudica is still not over the horrors of what happened and blames Marty for the actions of his father. The other lanterns, however, see this as an opportunity for the boy to atone for his father's sins, but Boudica is feeling betrayed by the others. They put it to a vote, and all of them, except for Boudica, pledge to help Tom and Marty. In their quest, uh, and they then realize that the planet they are on is Z- 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 what is it? Zandar? Zudar? <laughs> Zudar, I think, yeah. Zudar, home to Tomar Ray and his son, Tomar II, the Green Lanterns of Sector 2813. Since Tomar's death, the sector has been without a green lantern. Well, most of them have been, which allowed for mm-hmm. a horde of energy devouring Helocusts to ravage Zudar and let and set the people back 2,000 years. He then tells Marty that if he is to atone for his father's actions, he, he should start with his Zudarians. Holding the green lantern ring together, the two combine their willpowers and they manage to create a construct of a machine. However, the Green Lantern has arrived on Zudar and begins attacking Tom and Marty. He then picks up Marty with his scythe and slashes the boy, and in the process, the Green Lantern ring is dropped. Tom tries to go to Marty, but the Zudar Zudarians hold him back uh, with one of the Green Lanterns that accompany him to Zudar, telling him that this must be done and that they must have vengeance. The identity of the Green Lantern is then revealed to everyone. It is none other than the instructor of the Green Lantern Corps, Kilwog of Full of axe, Vic. <laughs> Finally, all those who hated Howe are free of his blood. <laughs> his legacy ends here. Tom then grabs hold of Marty's body and starts yelling at Hal, telling him that he couldn't do it and he couldn't save his own son. But Marty gets up and tells Tom that he remembers everything, the pain that he caused him and everyone. Tom reali- then realizes that Marty Jordan is not Hal's son, it's Hal himself. <laughs> Hal then starts to dissipate in green energy. Hal asks Tom what to do, that in all the things that he can do, he will use his power to do it. Suddenly, the Justice League arrives and tells Tom that he is neither Hal nor Marty. It is the power of the green given shape. Cal tells him that after the Dark Lantern attacked them, he did a little poking around and found that the energy signatures that the Lantern was leaving was coming from the sun, where Hal sacrificed his life to reignite it. Apparently, the energy that Hal had not had was not completely used to reignite the sun. There was still re- some remaining energy. All right, here's our most important part, as always. Batman <laughs> tells Batman. him, my favorite character, <laughs> tells him that the energy. Remember what Lil says, Ray? It's never the chance is never zero. Uh, that we're gonna say, Batman. All right, uh, Batman tells him that the energy gained sentience but lacked direction. So it fed off of images from Hal's dying mind and that it had been on Tom's mind since he started the journey. Superman then tells Tom to order Hal to give the ring back to him so that they can be protected from the Dark Lantern. As Tom considers his options, he remembers a time when he asked Hal what he would do if he ever had to go up against the JLA. Hal then tells him that the first thing he would do is to be on the defense against Martian Manhunter's telepathy and flash his speed. Then he would go after Batman, Batman, <laughs> my favorite character, and send him far away as possible. Then he would go up against the big guns. First, he would trap Flash in a loop to lower him, to allow him to build up speed and unleash that power against the League. He would then go after Cal. Since his willpower was is greater than Cal's, he would absorb his ring's power and defeat him. Lastly, he would turn his attention towards Superman. Despite Superman's godlike powers, there's one thing that can stop him, and that's Kryptonite, which ironically is green. He would use that fear of kryptonite on Superman and let the ring do the rest by conjuring up Superman's nightmares, which would stop him. Believe it or not, Hal is actually doing those very things to the league right now. Something is going wrong. We then see Hal materialize in front of Tom and Marty, this time in his parallax uniform. He then talks with Tom, reminding him of his own mistakes as a poor sidekick when he was Green Lantern, how his family is in shambles because he's not a good father and even shows him the moment when he went off into space, heading towards Oa to destroy the core. 
Suddenly, Parallax is then stabbed from behind by the green, by the Dark Lantern. <laughs> uh, the two then fight it out as Tom is then forced to see the thoughts that Hal was feeling as he left the crater that was once Coast City and headed off the Oa to face the Guardians. He then remembers a time when he and his family were glued to the television trying to get news about what happened to Coast City. Tom was being shown that Hal was thinking about where he was after the explosion, but that if he tried to get Hal's attention, then everything would fall apart. He's told by Marty that since the Guardians chose Guy and he chose John, Hal was going to choose Tom to be the next Green Lantern. Hmm. As that's happening, as that's happening, Parallax and Dark Lantern continue to battle each other, but Marty uses his powers to convince Parallax that the power does not belong to him. Uh, Tom then picks up Hal's old power battery and reminds him of Alan's Green Lantern Oath. And I shall shed my light over dark evil, for the dark things cannot stand the light, the light of the Green Lantern. Parallax tries to destroy Tom, but his powers are drained. As Kilwag realizes that he's alive, Tom then tells Marty that he stopped hating him and himself and that he took the power away that Marty had on him. Parallax tries to take the power from him, but Tom tells him that despite his quest to gain all the power of the Green Lantern Corps, a part of him doesn't want to destroy the core during his rampage, and that part of him sent Morty to him. Parallax tries to deny it, saying that he wanted to fix things. Tom then tells him that Marty is the representation of all the good that was in Hal, and that despite his horrible actions, he is still his friend. Hal leaves and changes into Parallax and tells Tom that, he, that he'll fail, that he can't change what happened, but Tom isn't trying anymore and disappears, leaving Parallax alone. As Tom, Marty, and Kilwag are flying through space, they come to the center of the universe. The remains of what was once Oa, the home world of the Green Lantern Corps, Kilwag tells them that he must kill them, but Tom convinces him to allow him to do one thing, and that if he fails, he can kill them both. Marty then gives Tom the Green Lantern Ring. Tom puts it on and begins to recite the oath of the Green Lanterns. As that's happening, the debris around them starts collecting and begins to join with the ring, which grows and grows until it becomes a planet. The planet Oa, once again, in all its glory. <laughs> Kilwalk then asks them that if Oa is rebuilt, then the core is rebuilt as well. Tom tells them that if they build it, they will come. Thank you, Kevin Costner. Uh... <laughs> He then gives them the power, gives the power ring to Kilwag, who absorbs it into his body and feeling happy for the first time in many years, disappears into the Green Lantern central power battery. I'll be back, kids. Meanwhile, back on Earth, Tom and Morty are talking to each other about the journey. Tom asks Morty if what he did was right, to which Morty tells him to look into his heart. Tom feels that what he has done is right and that he must continue writing his book. He then hugs Morty and they disappear. Tom then finds himself outside his wife's house and asks Hal if he wants him to reconstruct another planet, but Hal tells him that he's going to do a great job. They hug once again, and Tom then sees Hal transform into the Spectre and disappears, but not before thanking Tom for being a good friend, and they both say goodbye to each other. Then Tom heads toward the house, hearing the sound of his kids arguing with, it, with each other, with one of them saying that their father will fix it. <sighs> <laughs> All right, oh, Will. All right, Will. Where would you like to start? <laughs> um, I missed like the second or third sentence. Can you start over? <laughs> oh, how dare you! <laughs> I'm just messing with you. I know. <laughs> um, why don't I let you take a break for a moment? <laughs> Which thread would you like to pull, William? <laughs> well, the first thing that that comes to mind is whether or not Hal's identity as Green Lantern is public. Because hmm. I, you know, I remember we talked about this during yeah. you know the funeral in in the regular Green Lantern title, and this seems to make me think that it is public, right? Because Tom, yeah, and he tells that story about Carol, so you know they mm -hmm. you know, any anybody with have a brain could figure out who Green Lantern was, right? Uh, so I, which it's not you know during and maybe the Spectre fixes this at some point. You know, who knows? He, 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 he could, yeah. he, he might. I mean, especially if how yeah. once how Jordan comes back. So, I mean, he did give Wally West his secret identity back, so it's possible, exactly. So, that was a little weird. Um, Tom, so the other thing is we get Oa back, we get Kilowog back, and they, you know, throughout this, they talk about all of the bodies, all of the Green Lanterns that Hal killed. Well, first off, there were only, what, about 12? 
at the time? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we yeah. <laughs> okay, so so we had twelve Green Lanterns that he had recruited. You know, we had uh, Creon and Boudica. Hmm. We had um, the mushroom one, Amanita. Oh yeah. Um, we had uh, uh, Brick. Brick, yeah. yeah. Uh huh. We had her, and then Guy and John. Mm-hmm. Gnort. Yes. <laughs> okay. And Kilowog. Mm-hmm. So, of those, the only I think we I think we did see him cut off Boudicca's hand in Emerald Twilight. Yeah. If I remember correctly. And I think we saw him take Tomar Two's ring, but I don't know if we saw. I don't think yeah. do anything else. Do we did see him take the ring? Yeah. Oh, he, and he, doesn't he show up later in? After rebirth, as still being alive, maybe. Who? Hang on, let me look. Tomar too. Oh, uh, I can't remember. Oh, you, it's not explicit, but you know who he might have killed. He defeats Jack T. Chance and takes his ring while they're like floating in space. So. Oh, that's true. Uh, like, let's hey, see. I, uh, I started running Emerald Twilight through my head. I'm like, oh yeah, he did. He didn't mess up Jack T. Jack T. Chance. Nope. Tomar too was one of the lost lanterns that um, mm. you know, like Arisia. Yeah. There was, you know, another one. Um, so he so that's the the thing that so much I think of this story has kind of been retconned out of existence. Well, yeah, because um, when Tal's back, we don't want to make him a mass murderer. So yeah, it's not you know. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously it was parallax, you yeah. know, whatever. Um and him killing Sinestro, I actually found that in Green Lantern Rebirth. <laughs> yes. Uh, Sin- Sinestro says, you'd be amazed at the constructs Parallax is capable of. I tortured Jordan with many of them. My quote-unquote death at his hands was the final stage of his susceptibility to the impurity. I would have thought it would have been killing Kilowog, but whatever. Uh, it broke his will. It allowed Parallax to leech on to his soul. So, there you go. Or did he kill Parallax before he killed Kilowog? Oh, uh, Sinestro? Uh I yeah. uh, I think he I think he, I'm trying to remember cuz cuz I think he knocks Kilwog down and then doesn't does he kill Sinestro and then does Kilwog get in his way like right before he gets to the Guardians and, and he blasts like, yeah. Yeah, cuz it's one thing to kill Sinestro but then when he ki- you know he kills Kilwog kills yeah. Kilwog yeah. Cuz that weird. makes more sense, you know, if he was already infected then by Parallax yeah. because then it's not him. So Because and again too it's like, you know, if you see him kill Killwalk first, is it really is it going to be that shock not, if you see him see yeah, snap Sinestro's neck now? Exactly. So at the end of this and correct me if I'm wrong here because you know it's a day that ends in Y. Um we get Oa back. Yes. And we get Kilowog back. Right? Kind of, sort of, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, I know Kilowog eventually shows up in the main book. Yes, yeah, yeah. I, I, think I, I don't he know gets, He gets, like, his is. regular body back, yeah. Okay. So, you know, I get we have to, you know, this is about Tom forgiving Hal. Mm-hmm. And Hal as the specter really forcing Tom to deal with yeah. that emotional trauma, I think. Yeah. Um, but dude, this thing undoes a lot of Emerald Twilight, right? I mean, I'm not, I'm not just making that up. I know that's uh, what I'm telling get... you. I, I'm, I'm like, <laughs> how far ahead do they know they were bringing Hal Jordan back? It's like, yeah, we're kind of winding stuff back already. And this was this came out after, and I do know that uh, I was reading a, a review of this online before, and um, it came out after nine eleven, mm. you know, not not long after nine eleven. It was probably being worked on, you know, when nine eleven happened or started shortly thereafter. So there's yeah, um, cover dates January two thousand two. So yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, it, it's interesting in that light. But, uh, you know, we've got, what was the date on, on Rebirth was 2004. Is that right? I think so. Hang on. I can check on that. You've got 20 copies of it there. And you're like, when the Rebirth? (laughs) 
I've got the hardcover, dude, not the individual issue. I mean, that's somewhere else. I can't get to that right now. <laughs> um, so, I mean, this was interesting in that, you know, Mars had been laying a lot of the groundwork, I feel like, for the return of, you know, a lot of the aspects of the core, right? Mm -hmm. So this one kind of went, you know, I mean, it, it, it went, it went way further. than, uh, Or, or are we already starting to clean up how Jordan's image because, Oh, Hey, he's about to have his own specter book. So yeah, I mean, that's, that, that's possible too. because before, I mean, it, before, uh, before it's like, oh, we're going to get rid of Hal Jordan. So we don't have to show him in any redeeming light. But now we're trying to sell a Hal Jordan book. So it's like, uh... yeah. And this was, um, this was before the specter. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Um, I think, I mean, it's pretty close because yeah. And uh, what is it? Two episodes from now, we're going to be starting the specter. So, uh, see was that 2000 it's not coming up yeah i forget i was just looking this up oh uh oh no yeah 2001 so let's see uh oh and i'm sorry number can I just mention what a travesty it is that none of the Spectre, JMD Mateus' Spectre issues are, 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 and they're not on uh, the app. Yeah, no. Oh, thank you, DC. I mean, come on. I mean, there's other there's other Spectre runs, which I'm sure are fine, but I'm like, you're not going to put this one on there? Okay, okay. so the on-sale date of... March 2001. Uh, Wait, what? Okay, so, What? Wait, what? It's saying March 2001. Oh. What? <laughs> is, that when the spec is that when the Spectre series came out? It's saying Spectre number one, so... Yeah. Okay. The, well, that's so the Spectre series was going on yeah. when the Last Will and Testament came out. So that's cool. Um, Green Lantern Rebirth number one came out uh, October twenty seventh of two thousand four. Yes. So th this was January of two. I mean, we're talking you know over two years ahead of Green Lantern Rebirth, right? Yeah. So yeah, it's. Or, or what could this have just been like a simple, like, uh, you know, it's like, oh, hey, kids, we've got a Hal Jordan book out right now. It's like, hey, look, let's, let's, or unless it was selling well when they were just like, oh, hey, let's pump out some more, uh, Hal Jordan content. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's because it's a weird, um, yeah. it doesn't look, I mean, and part of that is because, uh, you know, Anderson has a more, naturalistic approach so it doesn't look superhero y mm -hmm. if that's you know a word that I can use. And then Sinkevich inking him is you know gives it a completely different look as well. So mm -hmm. it's uh it doesn't look like any other book on the stands, you know, and then it, mm -hmm. it doesn't even look like the Spectre book because you know you had lots of different you know P. Craig Russell, you had Ryan Sook, you had all these other guys doing doing the Spectre series. I don't know. It's um it's an interesting book because, you know, it, it was just, hey, suddenly here's a giant Green Lantern hardcover with Hal Jordan in it. Okay. <laughs> and... I know it, when it came out, <laughs> when it came out, I missed it right away. Cause I think, you know, like we say, Kilowog's going to show up in the main series. And I think yeah. I picked that up first and it says, you know, once he shows up, it's like, or no, they show Oa and it's just like, I'm like, wait a minute. Oh, and then they're like, oh, see the last will and testament of Hal Jordan. I'm like, what? <laughs> Yeah, I'm, uh, I don't know, it, I'm kind of of two minds on it. I mean, obviously the art is, you know, very, very well done. You know, Anderson apes some of the Silver Age story styles and everything. I mean, he goes all out. It's, the art is great. And I think Kelly writes a, an interesting story, but it's so, It's so focused on Emerald Twilight. I mean, that is yeah. That's but, the that's the core of this book. Is that hey, this is this is this good man that went bad, and this is this his best friend who can't forgive him, right? Yeah. 
So it's so we do get a little bit of a of a, a retcon with supposedly Hal checked in on Tom to make sure he was okay before he headed off to Oa, but he didn't want to go see him because he knew he would get talked out of it, right? I guess, yeah. Um, and we get crazy parallax in here as well, you know, Always. along with Spectre Hal, who's also still parallax Hal. <laughs> apparently yeah, so, so, I'm like, so i'm like is this, is this parallax time traveling once again just like i think it was tom time traveling uh, but yeah it got kind of confusing i was just like we yeah, already saw him as yeah. how is the specter so what's parallax uh, doing here yeah it was it was a little hard to follow what was real what was the dream what was not yeah I he, mean, had an, uh, he had an angel and a devil on his shoulder they were both out jordan <laughs> yeah <laughs> Nice. <laughs> um, you know, and for Kilowog to be this instrument of vengeance that the other lanterns called forth, yeah, that was never really explained. Yeah, we used dark. There was dark magic. I went, what? What? I don't. What? Dark alien <laughs> magic, Will. <laughs> yes. I mean, that didn't make a whole lot of sense. I mean, I get that. I get that it had to be Kilowog because he's the one that how he is the one that how killed on screen. Yes. Right. That, and he's the only one really, except for Sinestro, which yeah. is a light, a fear construct. <laughs> but, uh, so the Tomar two thing never happened. Boudica shows up again in the book, uh, and becomes an alpha lantern. I think I, I can't remember what happens to her. I think so. But I mean, well, yeah, we already see they're alive. Some of these guys. Yeah. Are alive, yeah. But I think the book, it makes them, you know, there's lots of us. We went and we found all of the previous lanterns. Well, okay. Granted, maybe they went back and got the lanterns whose rings died at the end of the eight, the 60s series. Right. Because remember they were, they were knocked down to just seven rings. Oh yeah. yeah right. Yeah. So maybe they went and gathered up the other 36, 3,500, whatever lanterns who, but then because the timeline gets a, I mean, yeah, you start compressing the timeline. Well, Hey, Emerald twilight that took 10 years of us. Uh, that was about three months, uh, in continuity time. Right. Yeah. No. <laughs> uh, so it's, it's it's too bad. It's too bad. Cal couldn't have found these guys when he was like handing out ring, trying to hand out rings, you know? <laughs> yeah. And then there's the one that committed suicide, which I still, you know, Ron Mars, I think did a great job on green lantern. A green lantern would not do that. Mm, mm. It's about will. Right. So just like this show. I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, again, I mean, you can always get into mental mental health issues and stuff, mm -hmm. but I don't know. But, but, but Green Lanterns are, you know, without fear. They are yeah, strong. True. You know, they're 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 a cut above everybody else. That's and I'm not saying. I, I mean, you could be without fear and still be uh, mentally deranged or something. Will <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. That is true. Some people uh, might say that's a, that, that that's a sign that of is a deranged. Yeah. That you have no fear <laughs> being nothing. without fear. You're nothing. <laughs> Uh, which we got into when GL was on Oprah, right? Sorry, oh. Actually, Comics <laughs> Weekly. Yellow safe. Yellow safe. <laughs> Sorry, the over the ability to overcome fear, right? <laughs> Man, we could be superheroes. We had the ability to overcome that action Comics Weekly. Oh, that does take a lot of effort. Um, I don't know. This was. And what what did you think? What did you think of like? Oh, eventually maybe Tom was going to be picked for as how one of Hal's replacements. Uh, I think that's kind of a cool, a cool idea. Um, but again, like Recon, it's like, well, the, then when they were rebuilding the core, pre, you know, pre Emerald Twilight, why didn't, why didn't he go yeah, to him? But, unless it's just, oh, he has a wife and kids now, maybe, or I don't know. I mean, it's it, it know, was an interesting. You know, back I, in the I, day when he was the sidekick, it was just, you know, it would have been like, oh yeah, here's a ring. Yeah, this book is just such an oddity because I mean, yeah. I really feel like it comes completely out of nowhere you know in 2002 yeah 
Um, and shouldn't, because, this, shouldn't this have come closer to his funeral and stuff? I would have thought so, which is, you know, like five years before this, you know, or yeah. four years before this. Um, I mean, it's, it's just so, so weird. And then, you know, two years later, a little over two years later, mm-hmm. uh, the, uh, the Green Lantern series is canceled and we get Rebirth. You know, and, and again, was this setting the stage? I don't know about bringing Hal back, but set, bringing other stuff back because again, Oa's back, Kill Kilowog's kind of back, but he's going to get his real body back soon. It's like, uh huh. And then, um, you know, Ganthet's still around, but we're going to get more Guardians, I think, in the the main book as well, right? Oh yeah, Baby Guardians, yeah, Baby Guardians. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't know. I it's. It's a very strange book, is it, I, and it, I don't know how I feel about it. How do you, do you feel it, about it? <laughs> I don't know. Well, I was going to say, I'm not sure whether you think there are editorial mandates, and then plus we get Joe Kelly, who's a great writer, but not a typical Green Lantern writer. Yeah. I don't know. it. Uh, but we have Brent Anderson and Bill Sienkiewicz. I mean, yes. <laughs> an awesome art team. But, but again, you're selling a hardcover. You better be bringing in a good writer and a good art team. Uh yeah, and I – it was just – it was completely – I don't know. Because they weren't really collecting the Green Lantern title at the time. I don't think that there were any trades coming out of it. Yeah, no, I don't think. Yeah, no, the, I mean, this was an original, I think, it, it, what started in hardcover. So. Yeah, I mean, it, it was just suddenly there. I'm like – and, you know, and Hal hadn't been Green Lantern by that point, you know, for seven years, right? Yeah, seven, seven or eight years almost yeah. at this point. Yeah. And, you know, that was Emerald Twilight that long ago. And then, you know, Zero Hour, you know, then we get Final Night and, you know, boom, he's dead. Yeah. And then, then we get Day of Judgment. And now he's a Spectre. So he was actually, a, he was showing up in the Spectre series while this came out, but... <laughs> It didn't seem to have much to do with. Yeah, why wouldn't they do this in the Spectre? I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I really don't know. I would have thought that that would have been. Let's see, how many? It was a hundred and it's like a hundred and six pages, a hundred and something like that. Five. Yeah. Or hell, he could have did a crossover between uh, Spectre and Green Lantern book. Yeah, I mean, it was. I don't know. It's just. Is this weird artifact of a, of that time? I, I, mean, yeah, I don't know. That's, that's what I said. I missed it when it first came out. They mentioned it in the main book like a couple months later. I was like, "Wait, what? I gotta find this." <laughs> so, I mean, I, I really, <sighs> let's see how many pages it is here. Uh... But yeah, kids. I mean, it's not on DC Universe in, uh, Infinite. Uh... Well, I th- and I think that kind of yeah, 106 pages. Yeah, it's 106 pages. So if a 22 page, you know, it's like five issues. Yeah, five times 22 would be 110. Why wouldn't they do this as a limited series or or just an arc in th- in one of the books? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I but it, I mean, it was a high end graphic novel, hardcover, yeah. boom, and it was just there. Um, yeah, I. Do, do, well, um, they never reprinted it in like you know, like a like a paper, you know, just like the soft cover or anything. It was. I I think they did, but I'm not oh. sure. Hang on, let's see. Well, you know what? It's, it's like well, it's like this this one might get lost in the mix too, like in the in the, the mists of time, because like we said, two years after, well, a little over two three, you know, it's like two or three years after this, how Jordan comes mm-hmm. back, and basically it's just like. Well, what do we care about his his will and stuff when he's alive? Yeah, actually, and it looks like the the soft cover of this came out in uh, on sale date of <laughs> the week after Rebirth came out. <laughs> Maybe it's what people were looking for how Jordan content. I don't know. But... I don't know. <laughs> or it's like, hey, you want to know why O was back? Here we go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it's. It's odd. It's odd to me that a 
fundamental change, and we're talking fundamental change to the ongoing Green Lantern book, happened in a a graphic novel, uh, a yeah. hardcover graphic novel. I mean, Kyle shows up in it, but he doesn't really. No. It doesn't treat him well, I don't think. Because, um, like I said, I read the main book before I read this, and I was like, "Wait a minute, O is back. Wait a minute, Kill walks back." <laughs> So, it, yeah, it's just, it's again, just it's, it's off to the side. I, it's just like, here's this thing. Yeah. Oh, and it completely changes. You know, oh, it's not gone anymore. Yeah. Kill Walker. But it doesn't matter because Parallax, Parallax is gone, except he's not, except he's a Spectre, except he's Hal. It's... <laughs> so, so uh, was one of the big points of this uh, book uh, to clean up some of uh, Hal's mistakes as Parallax? Hmm, that's interesting because they brought back Oa. So I know you uh, you blame someone else for blowing up Oa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly <laughs> because Kyle blew up Oa. <laughs> uh, he kind of had his hand forced. I don't know. I think the universe is pointing its finger at Hal Jordan. It's like all these stories of this era are, and you know which finger. I know, yeah, that's true. Uh, but um, that coward, Hal Jordan. <laughs> it uh, what? So uh, you know, I've been, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, I really, I'm not sure what to think about this. What, what do you think about it, Phil? I don't know. Like I said, like I came to it later <laughs> on because, yeah, again, I knew I didn't see it even like out in the wild. Like I would make you know trips to. Well, Borders was still around, Barnes and Noble, and like I don't remember seeing this. And it's just like all of a sudden mm -hmm. in the main book, it's like, oh yeah, it was back. Check out the last will and testament of Hal Jordan. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> what? Where? What is that? <laughs> I know. I'm like, wait a minute. We didn't do this because I think it's after 150. I'm like, what? Was it 150 or what? It was. It might have been after 150 when he goes back out in space. I'm just like, wait a minute. We didn't do this in 150 of the Green Lantern book. I'm like, what? Because it's kind of a big honking yeah. deal right <laughs> i mean i mean we you know we kind of killed kilowog in 50 we're not going to bring him back in 150 yeah and do you remember when kilowog starts showing back up in the main book ah uh, it might be like 160s or something here let me look at the app because i know there's at least like a cover of two he's on so okay uh yeah hold on uh DC Universe Infinite Kids. I'm checking there now, and they should uh, ad they should uh, advertise with us and pay us money. Uh... <laughs> totally. That find airs the series. Scroll, scrolling, scrolling. Uh, we are okay. There is past 150. I see a kilowog on. Oh, he is on the cover of 169, so maybe we'll get into a conversation with Old Hellfire about this one. Uh, <laughs> Good point. <laughs> exactly. Uh, which was written by Ben Robb, so maybe it's after okay. Winnick's run? Yeah. Okay. So, well, 169 was... Hold on, let me get your cover date here. Uh, open. It's right on the cover. Uh... 169 is cover dated November 2003. So that's almost two full years. It's a year and like. But I can't remember. Months after. I can't, I can't remember because I haven't reread these yet, but I'm trying to remember if he shows up before this. But that's the cover he's on. So. Uh, uh, it might be after the Green Arrow team up. Uh, see, I was. I kind of thought that it was like a, a steady drip of stuff, but it looks like more and more like it's just like boom, all of this stuff comes back like that. Yeah, know? yeah. Hmm. Well, again, I think uh, were we playing in this? How far are up? Because again, yeah, I see Killwong on the cover one sixty nine. This the series ends at one eighty one. Mm -hmm. A year later. Maybe that may. Uh, do you think maybe they had the idea of, oh, hey, we are going to bring Hal Jordan back. We don't have a set date yet. We don't have specific details down yet, but the, we're in the very early talks of bringing back Hal Jordan, perhaps. Well, we knew that they brought Ron Mars back to do the last six issues. Yes. So they knew they were rebooting at least yes. six months before the end of the, the Green Lantern series, yes. right? Mm -hmm. Um. 
And that was that started at 176. So yeah, that's what I'm saying. I see Kilowog going 169. So which is yeah, six seven months before that. So you know, I don't know. It's because I think it. I mean, was Jeff Johns an editor? Because I know I think he was one of the guys who was like he like he loved those older guys. So it's like we got to bring mm-hmm. back Hal Jordan. We got to bring back all of yeah, the Barry Allen. Yeah, Barry Allen. Yeah. You know, I don't know the. Um... I feel like, and and I could be wrong here, that sales were probably, and I I, sh- I should look this up. I, I don't know this, so take this with you know a big you know yeah. shaker full of salt. I feel like after Mars left, I feel like sales with him were really stable and and really probably you know good. Yeah, I think once he left they started to go down slowly. I mean, we got ring of fire, which yeah. you and I were not Mm-mm. thrilled with. <laughs> but, well, I, mean, uh, I mean, I mean, look at our sample uh, yeah. size here. I mean, you, you said you kind of dropped off during the Winnick run, right? Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it, that might be, you know, I stayed, you left that maybe that's the thing. Maybe that half the readers or a portion of the readership left. And then, you know, at some point they decided that hey something's got to change yeah we know something's going to change let's bring back ron mars who kicked it all off to finish it out since we know we're bringing you know at this point they probably knew we were bringing hal back and how we're bringing everyone back and how guy yeah the core yeah so i but how soon they knew that i mean yeah i don't know i don't know how actually and again, and then the spoilers, because we're going to get to hear this in a few weeks, but, you know, Cal eventually leaves Earth again, you know, gives a copy ring to John Stewart, who basically becomes, I mean, John Stewart starts showing up in the JLA book. So it's like, do you have a preference, John Stewart, Cal Rayner, if people are, you know, might just be picking up JLA for John Stewart? Yeah, I mean, that's certainly possible. I mean, the thing about... The thing that I wonder about is, you know, was Winnick the last regular writer of Green Lantern? Uh, I feel like Ben Robb was there for a uh. Well, but was that just a series of fill-ins? I mean, that, that's kind of what I'm wondering because, um, what was it, 167? Was that still Winnick? Um, hold on. I'm like, I should have closed it out. I'm bringing this back up here. Uh, again, thank you, DC Universe Infinite. You should uh, advertise with us. Uh, maybe I'll be able to find uh, Ben Rob was Ben Rob was 167. Uh, ch- 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 166, 165. Oh, uh, yeah, it looks like maybe 165 uh, starts Ben Rob. It's basically, yeah, yeah the, the issue after that Green Arrow crossover, yeah, that's when yep. Ben Rob takes over, yeah. Okay, and then, because, um, yeah, Ben Rob's only on there for... Well, he sta- it looks like he stays until Ron Mars comes back, so it's, uh, so one, what was that, 165 to one, uh, seven, wait, to 175, so... So only 11 issues. I mean, he wasn't even on there a year. I, does that count as a, you know, was he the regular writer on Green Lantern at that point? Or was he just, I mean, in? that's a regular writer these days. Yeah. Good point. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> Good point. Um, I don't you know. know. You get 10 or 12 these days. Well, and you know, if you look back over the nineties, Green Lantern series, you know, there are, and we're, I'm just talking the main series. You know, yeah. we have the writer that we're not going to talk about for yeah. obvious reasons. Yeah. Then we have Ron Mars. Mm-hmm. And if you say that, I mean, that's basically the first hundred plus issues of the series, right? There's a yeah, there's couple two of writers. Friends. Yeah. I mean, basically, uh, we, the first what 125 is those two writers, basically. Yeah. Ben Robb, I think, does a f- couple of fill ins then, and we get Judd Winnick. I mean, four writers and 181 issues. Yeah, you, you'll never see that the, anymore. Yeah, no. That's, 
I, I think that speaks to a certain consistency, whether it's, yeah. I mean, there are things that, you know, we yeah. talked about pre-Emerald Twilight that yeah. we didn't necessarily, you know, like about what that writer did, but yeah. it was consistent. You know, yeah. that's, that's what he did. Mars, super consistent. You know, I mean, it was, you knew what you were getting every month because he, he and Daryl Banks, and I think really, I'm, I'm sure I've said this before, but having Ron Mars as writer and being that consistent, stable voice, but then also having Daryl Banks or Jeff Johnson yes. oh, <laughs> as, wait, wait, as an artist. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Uh, you mean friend of the show, Jeff Johnson? Hi, this is Jeff Johnson. You're listening to the Capes and Lunatics podcast. You bet. <laughs> so, I mean, I I really feel like once Mars leaves, you know, Banks stays on for a while. Yeah, yeah. But then once he leaves, it's that stability's gone. And I yeah. think that really hurts the the book long term until ultimately it gets canceled. I do think too. It's like when Ron Mars comes in with Cow. It's like Cow is like very much the every man. You know, mm-hmm. as much as you can with the guy with the power ring, he kind of keeps the stories grounded. Mm-hmm. And then I mean, when it comes in, does an uh, does an okay job. But then after one fifty, Cow pretty much takes off into space for a while. And is it is it just wait a minute? It's like you very you gave us very before we had very grounded cow stories now he's out in space for at least a year or more it's like is it just like well this could be how you could swap out how jordan and we wouldn't miss a beat mm-hmm. i mean that uh, maybe i mean that's it's it's hard to say but uh you know, i'm gonna make a note to uh see if i can look up some of the sales i've got a a guide out there that lists some of the sales for this so yeah. gl sales i'll see if i can find it and I'll have it for next show. <laughs> I was going to say, I knew if anyone has anything you want, Green Lantern mm-hmm. sales will be used, my friend. That's right. That's right. <laughs> um, but yeah, this, the, the last will and testament of Hal Jordan is, it's got a great cover, you know, um, but it's, it's so, it's such an odd duck, you know, it really is. <laughs> It has literally nothing to do with the ongoing series, and yet it makes, it undoes huge plot points of that series, right? Yeah. Um, And it uses Hal, who's the Spectre, but doesn't even touch on the Spectre series. I I like it. It's just like own little island of... That is weird, yeah. Weird. I I mean, I, I don't know how else to put it. And was was it just like, oh, hey, Jam's doing such a good job. We don't want to interrupt what Jam DeMatteis is doing. So let's just, you know, maybe. But you would think that, you know, with the Spectre series being about Hal's redemption. Yes, this would be a big part of it. Yes, this would be a big part of it. Him, you know, Kilowog not actually being dead. You know, (laughs) I would think that that's kind of a big deal. But oh, well, I don't know. Like I said, it's just such an odd duck. And then. You know, it took them quite a long time to release a soft cover. If they did, I mean, I, I showed that they, at least the Grand Comics database thinks that they did, you know, comics.org. Yes. But, you know, I don't know. I haven't seen a copy. So, you know, I, I think that if it's in the GCD, it probably does exist. But to yeah. release it right during Rebirth, I that's just that's a strange decision, too. I mean, yeah, I don't know. Confusing. I'm confused. Are you confused? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I definitely felt that after reading this. Mm-hmm. But boom, <sighs> into the book. Three pages. Kilowatt's back. Oh, oh it's back. back. Done. Yeah. <laughs> <I> mean... <laughs> All right. Oh, hey, before we go, I have uh, there's well, the results of our poll. I mean, we didn't get that many more votes. Uh, kids, uh-huh. vote go vote. I mean, this is in the Green Lantern fan group on Facebook we have, which, hold on, I mean, I think this thing's like kind of like shy of like a thousand members or something, and we got like seven votes on the poll, so okay. people, go vote. Yeah. Go vote. 
early. We got, early. We got like 900 some members. And yeah, and we got seven votes. <laughs> okay, uh, still the clear winner so far. The first appearances of the classic Green Lantern characters. Cool. All right, we can do that. And tied for second are Hard Traveling Heroes and the Neil Game and Alan Moore stuff. So, okay. Again, cool. like I said, if we want an executive veto, I mean, whatever you want to do. <laughs> But yes, no no votes for Cosmic Odyssey or the Guy Gardner uh, Justice League stuff. So okay, so yeah, yeah. I still I still think that at some point we need to do Cosmic Odyssey. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe we could throw that in. Um, we could bump Rebirth back a week. <laughs> <laughs> Never. <laughs> um, because I think when we start talking more about John. We should yeah. definitely delve back into Cosmic Odyssey oh, and show yeah, yeah. because I think that's yeah, it's such an important story for him. And you know, maybe we can do a you know, we did summer of sixty nine. Maybe we can do a hard traveling hero summer or something and just Ooh, do all nice. the issues. Maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, hold on. Now I was gonna I was gonna look at the schedule for next year when we get to like when John gets the ring back. If oh yeah, we could slide slide it in there. Maybe yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know what they say. Uh, where is it? Go ahead, throw it in. <laughs> uh, where are we at? Uh, okay, twenty. Hey, don't we need to talk about Batman too for some reason? Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, where's that John Stewart? I mean, yeah, I mean, there's it's possible. I mean, there's yeah, we could probably do that. Uh, either that one with okay, yeah. I mean, do you just want me to throw it on Cosmic Odyssey on an episode then, and we'll cover that around yeah. that John gets the ring back. Okay, I mean, it's it's four issues, so you know, if we have one, you know, maybe we could split. I mean, we Spit got off I mean, an issue and throw it on the next show or something. I, or I mean, we have an episode with uh, two like two issues. I mean, we've yeah, done six before, would... no problem. So, yep, that sounds good. That sounds good. So, speaking of the schedule, Phil. Oh, that's enlighten right. us. Yes. <laughs> All right. So let me. That was the 2023 schedule. Let me open up 2022 schedule, which we're almost at the end of. That's right. So. Next week, kids, we'll be back with Green Lantern 141 and 142. Remember those mysterious arsons Jade was talking about? I think we get into those. And then we mentioned him enough tonight. The last week, the last episode of the year, we will be covering the Spectre 1 through 8. Nice. My good <laughs> friend of the show, Mr. J.M.D. Mateus. And I say good friend because he's been here many times. This is Jam DiMatteis, and you are listening to the Capes and Lunatics podcast. I was going to say end of the year might be rough for him, but I was going to say maybe when we get towards the end of the Spectre series, maybe I'd be like, hey, you want to talk some Spectre? <laughs> if you're not you know, busy, and if you're not busy uh, creating four Kickstarter books. Exactly. And I've said it before, I did not want to like the Spectre. Yeah. Because I thought it was, I thought the underlying premise was dumb, but it wasn't about what I thought it was going to be about. It was a, yeah. about redemption and it was so well done. I mean, well, I, well, I like one, well, one JMD Mateus and two, exactly. like I said, you have the, the, you know, now you have hindsight. You, now you see yeah. what eventually becomes of how Jordan. So, mm -hmm. and, and it's just, it's so well written. The art is, oh, yeah. it's, you know, amazing. It's, uh, and I feel like, Rebirth kind of retcons a lot of that. Oh, it reco uh, rebirth retcons a lot of stuff, Will. <laughs> yes. Voltarian DNA. <laughs> yeah. Well, it doesn't retcon that. It just gets rid of it. It just rips it out. <laughs> it just rips it all out by the roots. But I believe in the Spectre, his brother and his brother's wife die. And he's yeah. left with the... So, but they're alive, I think, in... No Fear, which is, you know, the kickoff arc of the Green Lantern Volume 4. Yeah, again, it's been a while since I read it, but I, I thought I remember at least one of his brothers was alive, so. Mm -hmm. So, hmm. I guess yeah. we'll see. We'll see soon. When do we, when do we hit the, 
the uh, rebirth. Is oh. that in April? <laughs> Hold on, let me let me open it back up. Uh, I just need a I need a kids. I need a countdown clock. The re- oh, countdown timer. You a, green, a green countdown clock behind me. It's like, <laughs> rebirth. it's like down to the second. Uh, rebirth is oh here we go. In May. Sorry, Will. May. Well, May. It hits the podcast in May. We'll probably we'll record it in, in April. April. Yes. Gotcha. Cool. For episode 117. And we are currently on episode 96. Yes. All right. So, yes, kids. But we have a lot of fun stuff along the way. Coming along, along the way. Special Thrones of Cosmic Odyssey. So, and our 100th episode is coming up, which is looking That's more right. and more like classic. Uh, first Nestro. Kilowog. Guy Gardner, Arithia, Cat Matui. Wait, Cat Matui. Sorry, Cat Matui. Um, well, we can do Arithia too. Kilowog. Did I already say Kilowog? Oh, we definitely got to do Kilowog. Yeah, he's one of the. Yeah, John Stewart. Yeah, kind of. He's kind of important. Right, no. <laughs> you say Sinestro? Yeah, Sinestro. Okay. Yeah. All right. So yeah, that'll be a big one, kid. So yes, so send us your thoughts. Email us, Capes and Lunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail 614-382-2737. That's 614-38CAPES. And remember, you can follow Sector 214 on Facebook, on Twitter. Uh, find uh, the Green Lantern Facebook fan group and go vote for our 100th episode. See if you can turn the tide if you want to. And remember, if you can find all of our find links to all the various social medias for all the other shows we do, you can find the Capes and Lunatics uh, network right now on Hive. Only one account so far. So, yes, Capes and Lunatics on Hive. Come join us there. Uh, Again, the YouTube channel, this one, and everything we do, all the interviews, like the Jeff Johnson interview, uh, all the uh, DG Chai Chesters go up there. So, yes, find. uh, everything on youtube uh smash that subscribe button so you don't miss a second of any of it smash it and of course the patreon because once again we're paying for this out of our own pocket every little bit helps but three to five dollars gets you early access including the monthly chichester chats uh that genius mr d chichester i got the good mic out for you guys and superhero movie brackets are over thank god but you can listen to the whole series now on patreon so just gotta get to subscribe and then in 2023, Little Hellfire says you can give us ideas if you are a patron. So go subscribe and Capes and Lunatics, Capes and Lunatics Sidekicks merch. Find it all at Linktree, L A N K T R dot E E slash Capes and Lunatics. All right, Mr. Will Allred, Master of the Core, Master of the Quantum Zone, Master of the Kickstarter, Master of Podcasting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and rebirth. Where can people get all of you? <laughs> Uh, you can find me at Walred. That's at W A L L R E D. And if you're interested in the comics that I write, uh, you can check out Crossover Division at crossoverdivision.com. Issue number four should be going to the printer very shortly, I hope, and uh, be sent out soon after that. But uh, other issues are available. So if you go to crossoverdivision.com, you I think will get redirected to the Backer Kit pre order store. Where you can also order copies of Diary of Night, which is another series that I wrote. Uh, you can also check yeah. it out at diaryofnight.com. And uh, Phil is not the only uh, podcaster that I annoy on a weekly basis. I hang out with uh, writer Kevin Joseph, and together we uh, talk to uh, comics creators that have ongoing crowdfunding projects, uh, usually Kickstarter. And it's called Explain Yourself. It's every Friday night at uh, 10 o'clock uh, Central Time. I think it's 11 Eastern Time. Late night. Yep. Um, and if you're interested in Quasar, and obviously you are because you have great taste since you're listening to us, uh, you can check out and find that, uh, find out all kinds of cool stuff about Quasar at the Quantum Zone, quantumzone.org. They aren't even attempting to enter our orifices. <laughs> oh, come on, Strong. Hey, boys. <laughs> the party? I love the party. I'll put it in my navel. I still cannot oh, believe it. That, somewhere nice. I cannot believe that made it into a Marvel Comics book. I know. <laughs> and children. Did we, did, uh, did we well, decide that it was Tom DeFalco that wrote that I line? I think because it wasn't out of <laughs> DeFalco Fantastic Four. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I don't want to go back and look because of a star blast. <laughs> and kids, if you did not get the point tonight. Let me reiterate. I, of course, love how Jordan. 
That's right. <laughs> oh, yeah, kids. Yeah. And again, stay tuned for new stuff in 2023. Salty and Petty with me and Lilith, where we basically just talk whatever the hell we want. And then me and Justin are going to do Marvel Tales, where we talk something Marvel every episode, something different. We're, we're going to talk. A, we're going to. Hey, we're going to talk a Will Allred favorite in episode one. Genus fell. <laughs> Did you sit? Oh, did you read that new the Peter David put out a new uh, genus series? No, I haven't read it. It was five ep- five issues. The uh, issue five came out was it last week or the week before? Yeah. Oh, good. Cool. Spoilers: Him and Rick Jones are bonded again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cool. <laughs> and I don't know where he showed up next, but they're like, "Oh, stay tuned. He's going to show up somewhere." <laughs> or they are going to show up somewhere. So yeah, there's there's your cosmic stuff from the other side, kid. <laughs> all right thank you for joining us for this for this reading of uh some crazy man's will uh <laughs> come back next week greenlander 141 and 142 and then we end the year with in a good way with some jam dimatea spec there the first eight issues and tell dc you want his stuff that collect you want that collected you want his spider-man run with sal busema collected Pretty sure DC won't collect that, though. Well, not DC, but... <laughs> I know, I'm just giving you, gotta, you crap, you all two companies. Yes. <laughs> all right, that'd be cool if they did. All right, kids, join us <laughs> next time. And remember, be nice to your friends. They're going to really come back and haunt you. Good night. <laughs>